Howdy there guys and girls, Ruckus here bringing you some more Blitz action on a day where there seems to be some kind of construction work going on outside my apartment window. I swear you never realise how noisy the environment you live in is until you try and find a quiet moment to sit down and do some sound recording. Hopefully that doesn't show through too much. Now today's episode is on the VK 301 d This is the tier 6 of the German Leopard 1 medium tank line. Good little machine, quite enjoyed it and uh, it's just about fully researched on my way to the VK302D. All three games today we play with Carrick as my platoon mate. He's rocking the Sherman Jumbo. That's the new Sherman that branches the US medium and heavy tank lines at tier 6. And we are on uh, Hidden Temple for this one. Now, I've got the turret locked in position with the scroll bar down the bottom right hand side there whilst I weigh up the situation developing on the western flank. If you're not using that scroll bar, I definitely recommend that you bring it up and start practicing with it because keeping your turret where you expect your enemies to appear from or say keeping your armor facing towards the biggest threat is absolutely key. You know, you see a lot of times an enemy is trying to weigh up the situation behind them and they let their turret fling around and <laughs> gives you an easy shot on the side or allows you to slip by. Obviously it didn't matter in that situation, KV-1 only tank appearing on the right hand flank which means even if I needed to engage him I could have run the turret around easily. I leave him to our two Shermans, Carrick and the other guy who will feature heavily later in this video and move to help our KV-2 and KV-1 here who are facing off against this Churchill, a KV-2 and a KV-1S. The enemy VK301D is also here too. Also you can see VK appearing and there's a flat pans in the right somewhere as well. So this is the main threat here. Carrick and the other Jumbo are going to have to rush back soon to help out. Engaging the Churchill, getting some good shots on whilst maintaining a safe position from the flat pans and the VK to my right. Very lucky there, the VK shot looked like it went into a box. <laughs> Bad luck buddy. And we'll whittle him down with this 7.5 centimeter L70 gun. One through the building there. That's the VK done. Our KV1 though has just gone down. We've lost uh, the KV2 as well, so not looking good on that flank. Turned the auto aim off there to hit the KV1S through the boxes as he shot through, and that. KV2 is looking my way, so I'm bugging out. Now I need to move back to Carrick, who's come all the way around to the rear. He's engaging the flat panzer. And our other Sherman backup is sitting on the hills trying to snipe. Now Carrick, in hindsight, would have been better off playing very defensively here, but he pushes forward to engage the flat panzer. Looks like the KV1S gets a very lucky shot on the run on him. And now he is in trouble, needs backup. KV1S is a one shot kill, but I get a glancing blow. Trying to engage the flat panzer now. And this is when the KV2 derps Carrick in the face. Yep. And now it's just myself and the Jumbo versus these three. Flat panzer looks my way. Very slow to react though, so I get one more shot in and pull away. Away from the VK. Where's that KV-2? Need to fall back again. KV-2's looking my way. He's busting out. Run, son! We saw a shot go in from the Sherman there. And that is the last thing this guy will do. He's about to go AFK. Although I do not know it at the time. I slipped by. I'm really concerned about the KV-2's gun. But now I'm safe from him. I can engage this VK-301D. Who is overly confident because he's on full health. I'm getting some good shots away. He seems to be <laughs> having trouble targeting me. The gun on the VK is not fantastic with its accuracy. It's only 0.35 at best. And at the time, this VK, my own, was at about 81% crew skill. So if it looks a bit sluggish in its aiming and movement, that's probably why it is. Now, I'm waiting to go invisible here. Carrick informs me that the other Sherman is AFK, so it's just myself. But that VK is being spotted by the Sherman, who is in the bushes up on the hill. Which is at least something <laughs> of a bonus. Keeping the buildings between myself and the enemies on the cap. Go 
edge this VK who is now stuck in the river. Now the cap is climbing fast which means they're both on there, the flat panzer and the KV-2 is on three kills. Swap to APCR. I need to get up there fast, get out of the road building. Move up to a hold down position on the edge of this concrete embankment. Targets. Hit the KV-2, pull away. Poke up again, very dangerous move. Hit the KV-2 again. And then this is where it all comes unstuck. The KV-2 with the 152mm howitzer has an average damage of 960 with HE rounds. And those HE rounds have an average penetration of 86mm. I have 832 hit points and the front of my turret has 80 millimeters of armor and only 60 millimeters on the commander's cupola. What do you think is going to happen when I roll the dice and I poke up for a third look? Yep, completely predictable. And at the time, I was so mad. I was thinking, you big, dumb, stupid heavy tank. I bet that took so much skill. But really, whose fault is it? Mine, it's all my own fault. I poked up again in exactly the same position the KV-2 did exactly the right thing. He was probably sitting there with his auto-aim turned off. And as soon as my turret moved into view, he just took the shot. Right thing to do. What I should have done in hindsight, and what I didn't see at the time, I was just under a bit too much pressure and the brain wasn't thinking right, was I should have just pulled away, decoyed that I was flanking to the left. And then once I was hidden, come back to the same position, and uh, it would have been likely that their guns were looking in a different direction. I would have been able to take the shot safely. But my brain just was not functioning under the stress and it cost me the game, unfortunately. That was a loss. And what a loss. 3k damage for myself, one for Carrick, and well done to Ode1218 there in the KV2 for getting those four kills in the top gun on his team. 23 shots fired, 21 penetrations, 40,000 credits, and 2k XP. Match 2 is on Desert Sands, myself and Carrick again, tier 6 battle, I'm starting out in the open ground and Carrick is in town, he'll move this way eventually in that big slow jumbo. The Reds have got two tier 5 mediums, they are our most likely opponents at this first point of contact, so not the hardest fight, but I'm not going to charge forward recklessly, you do not maintain a plus 60% survival rate with that kind of attitude, I'll have to pull up here in this first crest and just see what comes along see what my teammates are doing and uh, you know it's always good to give yourself the option to retreat if need be. You do see teams noob rush this side of the map sometimes and if you get stuck down in that valley there then you are a goner. This time around though the Reds have not challenged the open ground and we have won it without a fight which is good news. I find that if you can hold the open ground in this map generally you have an easy win most of the time. Maybe not an easy win but you will win most of the time. Take a few hits there, cutting across the open ground to get into this high spot to engage the M4 who is not paying attention. Good news. Take a tracking shot. And now we see me angle the armor and dance back and forth to bounce that shot. Someone's moved up behind me and we double tap him. Now flat pans up on the hill. Looks like he's got Carrick tracked unfortunately out in the open. And he's just out DPMing him. There goes Carrick. Bad luck, buddy. He will have a better game in the third, I promise. <laughs> Lots of reds down in town there. Plenty of targets. Good, careful poking out. But I get the Panzer 4. Come back here, Flat Panzer. Ugh. Hit the tracks for no damage. We're losing the KV-1 to the left there. Looks like the Reds are pushing out into the open ground. Stug still looking my way, but a bit slow on the take there. And scores are even. We've got a couple of KVs out in the open. They should be priority targets. You've got to hit these guys whilst they are vulnerable, if I can get the gun depression. <laughs> there they go. Come on, spotters. There we go, KV-1. Tracked him out in the open. Second shot. Next. 
Uh, he's on fire, so he's gone. There's the flat pans again. He's come back. And you can find the flat pans at two. Nice killing blow, M4. Stug still looking this way. I think he's waiting for the M4 to poke out. He wants that kill. It's a decent little medium, the VK301D. No glaring weaknesses besides the fact that you know, the whole body seems to be full of ammo racks and fuel tanks <laughs> and crews that like to get knocked out. Um, besides that though, it's a fairly good all-rounder. The gun doesn't have any glaring weaknesses. The mobility is good. Gun depression is acceptable. Um, it's good. I mean, it's not outstanding in any way, but it's a good tank. I keep this T1 Heavy tracked in position. If I can just get this killing blow, yep. Just a KV-1S left. That's the top gun. My tier 5 backup is holding up well here. Got a tier 150 as well there up on the far ground. The crew skills were about 86%, I think, it was in this game. Hang on, let me check that. 85% for this game, so aim time is still quite slow. It is a bit better when it's maxed out. And there we go, Stug gets the kill. Well done, team. Top Gun, the first class badge on that one. 2.5k damage. 21 shots connecting and 51,000 credits. Today's final match is a very tier 8 battle on mines. The Reds have got 4 to our 3 tier 8s including 2 medium tanks and 2 fast tier 8 heavies. Mmm, it's going to be a tough hill push this one. Who's going to come with me? A call for an attack. Hopefully the Centurion, but as I glance behind... No, Centurion is going to the island, which means I've just got the Panther <laughs> backing me up. Better swap to those skill rounds. We fully expect to see the two tier 8 uh, red mediums on this approach. And here we go, T-44, first tank spotted. There's the Centurion 2. Not worth making that push. No way I'd survive that. I'll take a shot from the T-44, but we do get a few on the Centurion as he pushes into the high ground. Now, thankfully, the T-44 didn't go with him, which means that high ground is now a possibly uh, breachable position. Here comes Navy SEALs in the T-29. Is he going to roll? Yes, he is. And I'm going to do the same thing I did in that pattern video with the Morse. <laughs> Use him as cover, to a degree anyway, whilst we push the hill. Centurion sees the writing on the wall. He wants out now. He doesn't want a two-on-one battle. But he's not going to get there. He's taking fire from all angles, tracked in the open, and Carrick punches his ticket for his first kill. Angle the armor there, and you can see even with terrible sidearm, this thing's got 40 millimeters, I think it is. If you angle that enough, or if you angle it correctly, you can expect to bounce the occasional shot. A getaway with it that time. T44 is out in the open. He looks confused, and he's getting whittled down. For another shot here. Oh, don't know what happened with that one. But he's tracked out in the open. Probably get one more here. Yep. Carrick pulls out. And gets his second. And now we can see why the Reds are struggling. Their top tier heavies have gone all the way around into the town. Such a terrible move. Left the rest of their teammates to try and push the hill by themselves. And of course, they've just been overwhelmed. By tier 8, you really should know that that tactic does not work at all. I don't know why people still do it. Focus my attention here to the disturbingly named Scent Girl in the KV-1S, who is only rocking the 85mm gun. No threat there. Takes a heap of damage before pulling away. Who's next? The T-150's gone down. There's an IS up the back. 
I guess that's where I should be heading. If I can just get myself off this hill. Gently now. <laughs> I wouldn't be the first person to kill themselves off that jump. The VK-301D has these funny little wings on the side. I don't know what they are. They must be exhaust ports or maybe heat exchangers. Can't be exhaust ports. The exhaust at the back, but yeah, heat exchangers maybe. This is a funny look, hey. It's like a little bird. Folks down the IS now, who sees a nice easy tier 6 target behind him. <laughs> but I've got the KV-1S as cover. And he donks his shot. He's not going to survive much longer. Will I get the kill? No, Centurion does. Which means it's just the IS-3, who is taken out by the T-34. Well played team. And that is it for this episode. The tier 6 is coming out on top of that one. Carrick there with 1.3, myself with 2k. Not a bad game. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you soon on the next one. Peace.